Yes, being an entrepreneur takes a great deal of discernment. You have to have that, whether you're a business person or whether you're just a regular, everyday, random citizen, we have to have that discernment. It is so vitally important. And today we're talking about specifically, you know, issues in the workplace as an entrepreneur and how do we take care of those issues. Welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 63. Today is October 6th. We are so grateful for everyone being here. Thank you for those who are listening to the replay and for those who are in the chat at this time. We have 17 here today on the podcast. We welcome you, welcome you, welcome you. And we hope that you are doing the best thing for your life as an entrepreneur, showing up, being consistent, getting ready, and being the best in your position, what, you know, being the best person in the shoes you're in. So welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Darina Shine, and I'm so grateful that you are here today at Chronicles of a Nonprofit. So I received an email today, and I want to put this onto the podcast and get your opinion about it. I want you to email me with some of your personal situations that you may have relating to our topic today. Um, And so let's get right into the um, into the topic. Hello, I am an Amazon packing recruiter. I have several employees who I am responsible for. I noticed a young lady or a young couple who worked at home and they were not making mandatory online meetings. They would miss days of work, creating a backlog of orders, not being packaged for delivery. When I mentioned the severity of their lack of work performance, I noticed something. The female worker began immediately saying things that had nothing to do with the conversation about their at-home problems. The boyfriend tries shutting her down and, and throwing the situation in a different light. Why they were explaining why they were always late for work was because this or that. None of the issues seemed to make sense. Should I consider this to be a domestic issue? And how do I go about making sure it isn't? Hmm. Okay. This is a topic that we are going to have arise as an entrepreneur or a basic random citizen in our society when we deal with people, family, employees, contractors. So it is a touchy situation because you don't want to say at one point, should I jump the gun and straight call it domestic violence and then get the police involved and all of this? Or should I wait and then it become too late? So these are things that we need to think about, um, choices that we need to make as entrepreneurs. And these are the reasons for the Chronicles, because there are going to be experiences, both high and low in business, that we're going to have to make the decision, did we make the right choice in handling that? So when we look at domestic violence, it's, it's a serious, dark situation that also has the potential of seriously impacting an entrepreneur, especially a new individual thinking about going into business for themselves. And it can prevent productivity and it can also create victims surrounding the circumstance. That includes co-workers and, you know, just everyone everyone, especially since people have been working at home more than before since the pandemic. Um, That is extremely an important topic that we need to look at 
because we don't have school, we don't have work, we don't have things that will distract us from the home life. And if we have a domestic situation happening at the house or at work while we're at the house, it becomes a problem, a real big concern. So thank you so much, firstly, for sharing that information with me. I know it is um, a delicate one, and I know that it spills over. It spills over into the productivity. It spills over into the connection where someone feels, you know, that they can't help another person who may be in need of that help. But, you know, we have to just move forward cautiously and more than half of the victims that was part of a survey um, said that their ability to work has affected, has been affected by domestic violence, over half. And 75% reports that some form of harassment from their abusers while they're at work were considered either online while they're at work, doing their job. And it's just really, really sad. It's a sad situation. Um, and what I have to say about it, um, you know, you can't jump the gun however you can document. And I think documentation is highly vital in domestic uh, questionable situations. I also feel that there are important ways that you yourself can put the information out there through mandatory um, documentation, emails with domestic violence and information. Some people don't even know that they're existing within an, a domestic violence situation because it's they're not getting abused. They're not getting be beating, be physically assaulted. But there is still mental abuse, physic, uh, physical abuse, emotional abuse, financial abuse. And, and there are so many different ways that people can, you know, benefit from looking at information, just having something out there. Uh, maybe do an online video of what domestic violence looks like. And if this is something that they're experiencing, to please don't hesitate to let staff or uh, human resources know that they're going through something like that so they can get the support they need. And then also give them the information number. Here we have 211, so uh, you would be able to contact uh, your local police official and just ask what the non-reporting or anonymous number is to talk to someone just to get the advice that another person would need uh, to secure, you know, support. Now, whether it's physical, whether it's threatening, whether it's stalking, whether it's uh, missed work due to the abuse at home, the stress, the distractions, intimate partner violence, you know, because sexual, sexual assault is also part of domestic violence as well. It can result in high absenteeism and turnover, the wages of uh, losing wages and heightening risk of violence to coworkers and productivity. So in that, it is very cautious, ca uh, you know, cautious for you as an entrepreneur or either someone who is seeing someone going through that situation. I've done, I've done things such as health check calls, you know, where I call the police and I let the police know I have not talked to so-and-so in days and this is not like them. And uh, I've seen a decline in the way that they, their self-esteem looks outside. You could tell when a person has been abused, they feel it's just like a harmed animal. If an animal has been hit by a vehicle, it's going to cringe, it's going to shake, it's going to be very, um, it may become a little bit more aggressive to protect the fight or flight response. But other than that, it's going to be more timid. 
And when you see women or men in this case, especially in the same sex relationships, violence is extremely more dominant in those relationships than it than they are in my opinion than the heterosexual relationships um i believe that violence is violence it doesn't matter whether you're male or female but i believe that we tend to look at more of a tendency of controlling if a woman who is acting masculine has not tapped into her femininity and who believes in her mind psychologically that she is a male. So that becomes a question of situation at that point. And I've seen it many, many, many different times relative to same-sex relationships where the abuse and the abuser uh, was so far out there. Because to be in a same-sex relationship in today's society has its own stress involved in it. And being of a minority race, that also plays a significant factor in the, in the abuse. And then throw poverty in there, it really, it really manifests things that, you know, is best if people just learn to heal themselves through the traumatic experiences that are involved in whatever it is that they're dealing with. However, moving back to the situation, domestic violence is very sensitive. So if you believe that you're going to report it on a level of, quote, domestic violence, unquote, then I believe that you should have facts. I think you, it, it should be factually based. I do believe that we can plant seeds of opportunity to let people know that this is what I recognize. You know, I will send out a, if I'm watching a video of a judge show, Judge Mathis, Judge Million, you know, Judge Judy, or whoever, I may send out a video that has a intricate perspective of a situation and I'll ask someone for their opinion about it. What what do you think about this video? You know, do you think that the defendant was correct? Do you think the plaintiff was correct? You know, especially if it has something to do with, you know, domestic issues, relationship issues, cheating, uh, narcissistic, you know, opportunities. And I bring that up. I bring that word up consistently here at Chronicles of a Nonprofit because I believe that we all are facing someone who has that opportunity within their character. We all have that ability to be narcissistic. We really do. I do believe that narcissism to a degree before it becomes aggressive or spills over into the other person, the controlling of another person, but intuitively and respectively respecting who we are is determining, you know, that we have control over our lives, that we will not allow someone to walk over us or step over us, but to do it in a manipulative way to the point where you get someone to trust you and then knowing that that trust is going to be turned over into something that is going to be chaotic for that individual and destructive for that individual, that is just critically wrong. That is mentally cold. And we can't tell if a person is really and truly going to ever change. You know, uh, some people can wait for years. You know, that's why it's very important um, to at least give a relationship a six to nine months before you involve yourself into it, regardless if you feel that this is all you have. This is it. And you have to connect to this person if we give ourselves that healing time to just say, okay, I'm going to see what this is going to grow into. Let it grow like a flower, like a plant. Allow it to blossom before jumping in and saying that after the third date of conversation, because we've been on the phone on 
and we met on social media. We've been on the phone for three hours, an hour a day, every day for the last three days does not mean that he's your man or you're his woman or vice versa or opposite. You know, it means that you're spending time to get to know someone. And I can recall times in my relationships, I wouldn't call it abusive, but I would call it, I would call it controlling when I would have to, you know, sit on the phone and, and, and just be with that person on the phone all the time, getting nothing done. But a lot of that was me doing it, allowing it. Uh, pressuring myself because I just wanted to be with that individual. And so there is a creative niche that we must have when we're learning ourselves. And that means to be vitally connected to making sure that we are healed and that we are healthy. Healed and healthy. Being consistent. Being on time. And being the best person in our shoes that we can be for that day. And so, so I do, I do empathize with you as far as uh, being that entrepreneur that has to deal with this. Um, domestic violence in the workplace is very, oh, it's, it needs support. We don't have enough information um, on how to really and truly combat domestic violence in the workplace. Um, so the Bureau of Labor reports that only 30% of organizations have workplace violence policies, and then only 44% of those specifically address domestic violence. But employers are often aware of issues when their organization um, are dealing with them. They may be reluctant to take action due to the uncertainty about their role. Among other reasons, however, organizations and their partners have the potential to help prevent issues and support their employees. So it is critical to put a plan into place and address this issue. We want to collaborate with our, with our employees and our management, and we want to put out there certain perspectives, scenarios, just to get people's feedback just to see if, you know, we can tap into something that could possibly be relevant and connected to domestic violence. Um, assessing, um, putting together a disciplinary action policy, letting people know that this will not be tolerated in your organization, in your company, in your business, in your life. You know, you can tell people when you meet them even if you meet someone at the mall, he's very handsome. He looks like he drives a nice vehicle. He's dressed to impress. But yet, in order to get to know him, you have to have boundaries set so that you will not be taken aback by his material possessions. Because once this man or woman comes into your life, they can truly create a fiasco for you. Communicate, communicate, communicate. That's the most important thing we have to do in all relationships, in the workplace, in the personal life, commit to communicating. And so those are just a few things that I can think of right now. This is a topic that needs research. So find, you know, a Google app or some application where you can go on and get the research in which you need. Um, go to some university websites and look up domestic violence and how they're handling it in the work in the university, uh, what their rules are, and just read over them and then plug them into your establishment because that is going to be vitally important because you never know what a person is going through. Um, you know, you never know who that bus driver is um, and what they just experienced and what they have just encountered. We don't know um, what that essential worker who's going into the home and helping an elderly person or someone who is disabled, 
We don't know what they've gone through before they've walked into that door and how much more stress they can take. So being nice to people um, during this time, you know, the universe is doing some powerful things. It's awakening, awakening many of us, and it's also incorporating, you know, the truth and the reality behind who we are as a society. So I hope this helps. I hope um, that everyone understands. And I did get a few chat responses. I, I wanted to just stay focused. I thank you all for being a part of the podcast. And it is vital. It is important. A lot of the information that I just shared just randomly came from all of the wonderful entrepreneurs in the chat. I thank you so much for being here, for being consistent, for being on time, and being the best person in your shoes that you can be. So keep shining. Keep doing your ultimate best. And I look forward to the emails today. Um, I really would like to know what your point of view is on the domestic violence situation. And you can email me at scales to success LLC at gmail.com. That's S C A L E S T O S U C C E S S L L C at gmail.com. And you can also call me at the number in front of you. And it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. You know, you guys really, really empower me to feel so blessed to be able to share my experiences in all different areas and genres of chronicles because these are experiences, true, genuine experiences that many of us truly can understand and relate to. As always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.